Korea has enacted the so-called well-dying law, which allows death with dignity for limited cases of terminally ill patients. It'll officially take effect from February 2018. The term death with dignity is still new to Koreans, unlike in Western countries, where there's been controversies over euthanasia and doctor-assisted suicide. Korea's version of the death with dignity is limited to taking patients off life support. The colloquial expression is often known as pull the plug. Allowed cases are strictly confined to patients receiving certain forms of life-prolonging treatments, such as patients in comas and those who are on respirators, life support, or in terminal stages of cancer. Approval from a doctor, along with the consent from the patient or his or her family member, will be necessary to perform the procedure. As Korean society ages rapidly, the number of elderly patients is increasing. Many senior citizens and patients are interested in how to exercise their right to die without being too much of a burden to their family. Some are opposing the government's decision, believing that the enactment will lead to allowing doctor-assisted suicide. In any case, we need to admit that death is also a part of our life, and the right to die with dignity should be respected, along with other basic rights. That's why the government's arguably belated decision is welcomed by many patients and their family members in Korea. So yes, today we'll be talking about different sentences about the right to die and the well-dying law. Under the new law, patients who have a terminal illness can reject life-extending treatments. If the patient is in a coma, families can act on their behalf. So acting on their behalf is, or someone's behalf, is when you do something for somebody else. Uh, let's say your friend doesn't speak Korean. You can make a telephone on their behalf and do translations for them in Korean. Um, also acting on behalf in certain issues like the right to die, uh, families have what is called power of attorney. Uh, that means you can make financial decisions and medical decisions for your family member. That's called power of attorney. All right, next. Patients who are nearing death will have the right to reject medical treatment that would prolong life. Families of the patient can also make the decision for them. Yeah, so we're going to get into the, the definition of this well-dying law. So to make it clear, the well-dying law does not allow for doctor-assisted suicide. The law only allows patients with terminal diseases to end their life by not receiving further medical treatment. So... Basically, doctor-assisted suicide is when an individual will go to a doctor and ask to die. Um, this, in, in some areas of the world, was or still is illegal. Um, in certain states now, in America and countries in Europe, doctor-assisted suicide laws have been passed. So you can go to a doctor and ask to die if you have a certain condition. Um, but... With this law, it does not allow that in Korea. So this is not to be confused with doctor-assisted suicide. The well-dying law will allow for certain patients who are terminally ill um, or their family members to make the decision to stop life-prolonging treatment, which means that they will stop the treatment that is keeping them alive to end their suffering. Okay, so this is obviously a, a very controversial topic, and uh, no matter what side you, you're on, either pro or con, um, you know, for this, I think all patients should have the right to choose their destiny when it comes to life or death. And the government should not interfere with those who are ill and in pain and want the option to live or die. Yes, uh, so we'll be talking about the kind of amount of people or number of people that uh do not want to continue on living who are in pain. So the, the majority of terminally ill patients do not want to continue living in pain and want to die with dignity. Um, so when I say the majority, that's more than 50% of, again, the patients who are going to die eventually and there's no hope for them. So they want to die with dignity. Dying with dignity can avoid the long and arduous process 
of living in pain for most terminally ill patients. Uh, usually we use long and arduous when it's a, a journey, something very difficult. But for this, living in pain and, and trying to survive is long and arduous. Right, so we're going to talk about uh, the well-dying law and kind of its issues with people who support it and also people who do not support it. So opponents of the law say that some patients may take advantage of loopholes in the law and choose to end their lives prematurely. The question is, you know, who has a right to take a life, even if it is their own? Um, so, you know, loopholes are uh, an expression we use for uh, ways around the law. If, if a law states uh, that, you know, you cannot do something, people always find a way to get around the law. Uh, we use loopholes a lot when we talk about people avoiding taxes. Uh, you know, if you own your own business, you can expense almost anything to your, uh, to your business taxes, even if it's personal. That's a loophole. It's a way to get around the law. Opponents of the law say, in some cases, families, patients, and doctors may agree together to end life early to avoid mounting medical costs in the future. The question is, can you put a price on someone's life? So in America, medical costs are very expensive. So we use mounting medical costs. Mounting means increasing and increasing and increasing and uh, adding on to cost over time. And what doctors and patients and families might do if one of their relatives gets sick in the early stages, they might agree together to end the life early to not pay for those medical costs down the road. Yeah, money is always a huge issue uh, around the world. And uh, even in cases like this, uh, sickness can be very expensive. So due to financial and emotional burdens, Patients may choose to give up and choose death with dignity rather than trying to see the end of their treatment. So if you're looking at it from a, a cost analysis and also the, the emotional strain it'll put on your family, you might want to not go through a, a long and painful treatment process, but rather end it early and save time, money, and emotional pain to your family. Patients who are diagnosed with serious but possible treatable conditions may choose death with dignity rather than place financial pressure on themselves and their families in the long run. So if someone's diagnosed with cancer, they have to go through a chemotherapy treatment, which is very painful, and it's when the doctors and the medical systems bring you very close to death. They may choose to end their life early rather than take the risk of the treatment. Thank you, everybody. And I look forward to doing this next week.